<clears throat> What's Gucci, everybody? It's your boy, SJK. Dot, the first black Super Saiyan to ever on this planet. Now you may be here since you watched my Avengers Endgame. A mediocre build-up to 11 years that ended on a really not-so-popping note, you know? Look, we about to get into Avengers Infinity War. And how, look, if you... you the only way for you to know my feelings on this video, you would need to go watch the Avengers Endgame video because I released that one first. So, once you watch that, then you watch this one and you will know what I mean and what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Avengers Endgame. It's pretty mediocre to me. I dropped my grade to a C- minus now. Avengers Infinity War. I dropped my grade to a D. I like looking at these fans, these movies from a fan standpoint and more of a critical standpoint. You know, trying to also put a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of logic sometimes behind it. Not too much, but a little bit. But when a movie tries to make sense of something within itself and they contradict themselves with it, with, with, within whatever they're trying to set up, I'm going to call you out on your bullshit. Now, this is the Avengers Infinity War, you know, me, call, me letting you guys know why I really dislike this film and why, you know, I felt this film was very lacking on the things that people supposedly like it for. People call this a Thanos film. I would disagree on that because not once in the movie does Thanos get established properly. Doesn't he have a damn origin? This dude has, oh, this happened in my past. That's it. Okay, but you're doing a lot of things that I have questions about and Endgame never answers these things at all. Because this uh, Endgame is an Avengers movie. <clears throat> cool. Like I say, Winter Soldier, Captain America Civil War, Iron Man 1, and um, Civil War, Winter Soldier, Iron Man 1, and Avengers 1 are still better than Endgame and uh, Infinity War. In my opinion, they're better. They're ten times better. And not as convoluted and inconsistent. As these two films here. So a lot of pro plot. If you anybody, anybody has plot hole problems with Endgame. They are just as apparent in Infinity War. Because Infinity War started it. Like like I say. Infinity War is what Last Jedi is to. No no. Infinity War is what Episode 7 is to Last Jedi. Which is Endgame. Infinity War set up stuff. And, and Endgame didn't answer a bunch of that stuff. And you're like, what the freak? And think of Snoke dying compared to 2018 Thanos dying. And then you try to usher in a random villain. And think of Kylo Ren as 2014 Thanos. You're like, what the freak? You killed... That's basically what it is. 2018 Thanos is Snoke. Hyped up. You know, he did, did his thing a little bit. But then you kill him. And you give us 2014 Thanos who doesn't have a relationship with... The Avengers like that, that we see in our present timeline. Bullshit. Let's get into this video now. <clears throat> Image slideshow. Team Cap. Freak Iron Man. The pros of Avengers Infinity War. Very, very, this is very much it. Visually nice action scenes. They are visually nice. A lot of them are inconsistent power-wise. And I'll get to that. Likeable actors that save the basic script. These actors are so likable. This is how it, they say they're for Endgame. If it wasn't for Tony, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s, you know, charisma, his little swagger he got for his character, the script they was working with and, and the story they was trying to write, bro, I would have went like, what the freak is this? But they made it likable for me to be interested in it, to watch it. They brought some flair. Even Josh, Josh Brolin as Thanos. Josh Brolin Thanos has a whack has a whack motivation and ideology but when he talks and when he tries to say those one liners and when he does his action scenes they save it for Thanos if Thanos was not let's say for example if Thanos was not as physically strong as he was and he had this ideology Thanos would be a very whack character cuz Thanos uses his physical power to back up what he says for example this is how you can create a good villain what is you already have this as a good villain Joker from the Dark Knight. Joker from the Dark Knight. We know in Joker from the Dark Knight, he can't he can't fight a Christian Bell Batman. He can't he can barely fight him. But he gets him on a strategic standpoint. He uses his words. He plays with his mind. He 
when Batman sits him on a point like, oh, you're garbage, you're crazy, you kill for money, Joker's going to hit him back with, ha, 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 and he's going to rebuttal with a statement to counteract that. And they go back and forth. They'll go back and forth consist consistently. But for the most part in The Dark Knight, we know Joker surpassed the Batman in that movie. And that Joker made that his movie. Even though a lot of fans are pissed off at that, jo bruh, Joker made that his movie because not because of his power, because of what Joker said, with it and what he strengthened in his ideology to combat Batman's ideology. Joker's the opposite, and Batman is Batman's ideology is the opposite of Joker's. Batman is more of order, you know, order, justice in a way. Joker is chaos, anarchy, all that jazz, and they just counteract each other. But Thanos in this movie, Infinity War, there was a lot of heroes I was able to call him out on his BS, bro. A lot of heroes called him out on his BS in this movie, and they made him look uh, kind of whack. He physically overpowered them, but when it comes to wordplay, he didn't overpower them with them words. <laughs> he physically overpowered them. Joker can overpower you with his words and his, and his demeanor, but he doesn't necessarily need power to overpower you. You get what I'm saying? Let's keep going. And it's somewhat serious. J Infinity War, people say, oh, it's more serious than Endgame. I find that false because let's get into it. Cons. Terrible jokes placed in terrible times that kill the tone heavily. Y'all going to sit here and tell me Endga uh, Endgame and Infinity War are serious movies like people say they are serious movies. Endgame has a very serious first act. That second act of Endgame tur turned into a comedy sitcom, bro. Let's get into Infinity War. People say, oh, Infinity War is a serious movie. I'll tell you the issue with these com comedic moments. Because they're done poorly at the wrong times. Let's go. First scene. <laughs> So all these people around here are dying and fighting in war and Captain America and Thor are cracking jokes about haircuts. Yeah. Oh, and the most convenient thing about this scene, very convenient, very convenient. There's no enemies attacking them so they can crack a joke. Wow, plot convenience. Good writing. Superhero movies do these a lot and uh, this stuff gets too cliche. Like, come on now. <laughs> yeah. Is this not just a problem with with Infinity War? But tons of superhero movies do the same thing, and they they will do some stupid plot device so they can crack a joke, and somehow the world just is devoid and forgets what's going on, and they stop attacking the hero. It's like, okay. Mind you, how the people on this battlefield dying... RMC Rogers. Yeah. Okay. Next scene. From another somewhat of another meant to be serious scene. Tell me his name again. Thanos. He's a plague, Connie. Kind of now, this is the thing about this scene. This scene is building up Thanos to talk about what he is, that savagery that he's gonna bring, the the, the darkness that Thanos is gonna bring. But this scene contradicts itself when characters start cracking jokes about ice cream. And, um, yeah. They, they literally crack a joke about ice cream in a scene typing up the coming of Thanos. Like I say, Infinity War and Endgame should have been completely serious films. Hell, Winter Soldier and Civil War was a lot more serious than this, and they were on a smaller scale. That's crazy. But when we get to a big scale, crack jokes. Okay, watch. Just watch, guys. Just watch. He invades planets, he takes what he wants, he wipes out half the population. No can do. We swore an oath to protect the Time Stone with our lives. And I swore off dairy, but then Ben and Jerry's named a flavor after me, so... Start craving hazelnuts. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Chalky. <sighs> yeah. Then they get into a little funny banter about Ben and Jerry's ice cream, but... Earlier they was talking about Thanos is coming, people are gonna die. Thanos has a power stone and space stone. He's powerful. People are going to die. He's already so, so, so powerful. Wow. Okay. Next scene. Ooh. 
Yes. This was... I'm not saying none of these jokes weren't funny. What I'm saying is, they have... They, this is the MCU's problem. They build you up to a serious scene, then they hit you with a joke. And they keep on doing this, bro. This is not... This is not like one-time things. They keep on doing this. And this is going to be riddled in films in Phase 4. That's why they better either mature... Not mature it up, but take it a little bit more serious. I get these movies are PG-13, but you can still have a PG-13 film with a little, with a tiny bit of humor and still be serious. I'm just saying, bro. Because even most of these jokes they drop in these movies, for example, Guardians, they was dropping some pretty adult jokes. And you're telling me Guardians is for kids too? And they're dropping adult jokes? I don't know. I don't know. That's, that, that's backwards. Let's go. Gamora and Peter Quill confessing their love and stuff, talking about how, hey, Peter, could you shoot me just in case if my dad starts getting frisky with me, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Let's see what happens. A very serious and touching moment. Then watch this. Dude, how long have you been standing there? An hour. An hour? Are you serious? I've mastered the ability of standing so incredibly still that I've become invisible to the eye. Watch. You, you're eating a Zarg nut. But my movement was so slow. Let's stop. And see, this is my problem with this. Drax, you're about to get ready to go kill Thanos. Did Thanos not send Ronan to your planet to kill your family? Did this not happen? They're cracking jokes still. I get it's the Guardians, but this is the problem. It's not only the Guardians in these movies cracking jokes. Characters who aren't supposed to be cracking jokes are cracking jokes just for the sake of it. And they're killing the tone heavily of certain scenes. There's more scenes like these. There's more scenes like these. More scenes. But I'm only going to show you three. But just know, you get my issue with these, these two movies. Civil War is a lot more serious than this. And the airport fight scene was a complete joke. <laughs> wow. Gamora, the last of her kind in Guardians 1, but Thanos only killed half of her people. And like I say, why does Thanos love Gamora? Because this was never explained. And this contradicts what happened with the whole Soul Realm thing. Let's get into it. And this is my other issue with this film and why Thanos needed an origin. And I'll get to that soon. But let's rack out these. Let me just show you where they show that she's the last for kind. This is from Guardians 1. Gamora is the stealth. Wandered on over a dozen. Now, you look right here as I have it frozen. I'm going to keep this here for a while. You see right here where my cursor is going. Last, survi last survivor of the Zeho Betty people. Last survivor. Last survivor. Not one of the last survivors. Last survivor. So, that's false. And this is in what? Guardians of the Galaxy 1. When did Infinity War come out? It came out after Guardians of the Galaxy 1. That's a contradiction, bro. A huge contradiction. That makes no sense. So, you're telling me, Thanos killed half of her people. What? And people are saying Avengers Endgame is better than Infinity War when these inconsistencies been existed. In Infinity War. Endgame just made it more obvious. And like I say, people, what do people say? Infinity War is part one. Endgame is part two. They're both connected like people say. So, you know, they both got the same issues. Same exact is issues, bro. Thanos and Gamora talks. Let's see. Let's see if we get any character development of Thanos and Gamora in this scene to solidify why he chose her. Ashley, home that store's day. lowest prices of the Let's season see. are here. No. No. We were happy on my home planet. Going to bed hungry, scrounging for scraps. Your planet was on the brink of collapse. I'm the one who stopped that. You know what's happened since then? The children born have known nothing but full bellies and clear skies. It's a parrot. 
children born. Wait a minute. I thought she was the last survivor. Hmm. Guess not. So how is she ever the last survivor? Because Thanos only killed half. A contradiction. Is here in Infinity War? They're even more obvious in Endgame. This is part one. Two. This is part one. Endgame is part two. Like people say. I'm just saying. Small price to pay for salvation. You're insane. Little one, it's a simple calculus. This universe is finite, its resources finite. If life is left unchecked, life will cease to exist. Let's stop here. This is my problem with Thanos. Thanos, what if there's a planet in the universe? As the universe is a very big place, Thanos clearly has not explored the universe. He doesn't know the status of Asgard. We all know that. We all know he Thanos does not know the status of Asgard. We all know that. He never conquered Asgard. We know that for a fact. Searcher actually conquered Asgard. So, I ask you, Thanos, you went to a few planets, made a justification for the whole. That's Thanos basically did this. Hey, a few black a few black people here are pro black. So I guess all black people are are pro black. Well, hey, Thanos. What if there's a planet that, by some random <laughs> miracle, resupplies its own resupplies itself? What if? I'm just saying, you guys. What if the universe is a big place? The universe is a big place. But this all only works if Thanos is correct. Sure, there may be a point where you run out of resources, but for the most part, all societies on each of these planets are not the same. What if there's a planet where they they perfectly got a a a a, a good system to where they can distribute resources. What if? What if a planet is doing just fine? Sure, there's some planets that will have societies that are crumbled and broken and can't decide whether or not they can easily distribute resources. But what if there's our planets out there, which there has to be, because the universe is a big place. Not every not every planet is the exact same. Not every planet is the exact same. Not every society is the same. Not every species is, is the same. It's always something different. And it's the universe. It's a big place. That's why for the most part, and just watch this. Why uh, This is why I say, when it comes to Thanos and his, the way he argues and rebuttals, it ain't really solid like that. Because look at, look at Gamora in this scene. Look at Gamora in this scene. She seems more confident in what she's saying. But watch the, at the, the, the way Thanos acts. You know, watch this. Needs correction. You don't know that. I'm the only one who knows that. And right there, you saw that. You saw that. A lot of people do that. We all get frustrated when people don't understand. But it's like she said, "You don't know that." He doesn't know that. Nobody. The only person who would know that is if we had a person who went to every single planet in the universe and did the necessary tests and did the graphs tables and everything necessary to truly solidify this belief Thanos has because we as humans we make theories and and we make theories and assumptions about the universe some correct some are not but we can make assumptions but we but we have not w went to that many planets out of our Milky Way galaxy to confirm some stuff like this Thanos hasn't even either because he there's a bunch of planets Thanos hasn't been to for one the nine realms he'd never been there because if he went to the nine realms odin well heimdall odin and thor would have been dealt with him so he never been to nine realms there's a bunch of planets he hasn't went to because for thanos to do something this big he needs to literally go to every single planet to justify this but you know mad titan like people say mad titan let's keep going at least i'm the only one with the will to act on it. See? That's all we got. I'm the only one who is willing to do it. That's it? You're the only one willing to do it? Okay. Galaxy. Now let's let's go back to Gamora's planet. This is where we sort of solidify why Thanos got her. Because I want to know what is so special about Gamora? What did she do that was so special? Nothing. She was just a random kid. 
you'll understand when I bring up this scene. Just watch. Well, I feel more calm in this review than I did for Endgame. I haven't got fairy shit. I'm surprised. Oh my gosh, we're dying! Oh my god, I'm dead. Choose a side or die. One side is a revelation. Oh, so is that why Thanos got her? Cause, cause she hit that. You guys, watch what Thanos says after this. Oh, Gamora punched her. Dangerous. What's wrong, little one? My mother. Where is my mother? What's your name? Gamora. You're quite the fighter, Gamora. Is this... Who wrote this stuff? Who wrote this? <laughs> she did something any kid would have done. Get your hands off of me. I want to go back to my mommy. Get your hands off me, weird person. He looked at that and said, oh, wow, you're a fighter. Gamora did something that almost any child would have done. So I'm over here like, wait a minute. Why is she so special? Why did he adopt her? Because she hit one of his guards on the hand? Is this the reason he loves Gamora because she showed fighting potential? This is why it's stupid. Anybody could have been in that same position and boom. So I ask you, why is Gamora so special? Why is Gamora so special? Because in Guardians 1, Drax almost killed her in the prison. And she's the top female assassin, best fighter in the galaxy or whatever. Um, uh, Drax would say different. Drax from Guardians 1 would say different. He was about to kill her. Um, yeah, let's keep watching. So this is the reason Thanos found interest in her, because she hit a guard on the hand when anybody else would have done this. Is this the reason? This is basic writing, bruh. Come. Let me help you. Pretty, isn't it? Perfectly balanced. Hmm. I thought Gamora was the last of her kind. Concentrate. <sighs> So one half is dead, the other half is alive. So, yeah. Like I say, this is a cinematic universe. And when they try to make sense of something and establish something in one film, and, it, and you contradict yourself in another film, you're getting called out on it because that's inconsistent writing. Like I, like I say, it's mediocre, basic writing. Whatever problems you had in Endgame, are the same and you if you say infinity war is better than endgame why is it because it has action comedy what is it because if that's the case transformers films also have action and comedy too but hey i'm not saying the mcu's trash what i'm saying is these films are not what you think they are bro they're not they're like people hyping them up for extras now i'm gonna I'm ask some questions here hopefully you can answer but look but just look Thanos needs an origin. He's supposed to be the, he's the supposed epic villain of the Infinity Saga and he has no origin. They took out 30 minutes of his origin and how is this his movie? It wasn't. Where did his army come from? Where did Thanos get this amazing army from? What did he do in in the ranks to get this army? How did he become so feared in the galaxy? How how did that happen? What established him be, to be as feared as he was in the galaxy? What is that? How can he hold a six? How can he hold six Infinity Stones without dying? Why is Thanos such a strong being? What species is he? Go, use the MCU guys. Do not use the comics. I know what he is in the comics, but the movies need, need to explain what he is. And like I say, the MCU is not the comics. 
the MCU is the MCU. The MCU pulls from Earth 616 in the comics, but they are not Earth 616 because, like people say, it's not comics. They're, they're movies. They, they, they take, they, they, they adapt them. They're not the comics, so they can do whatever they want. Okay. Well, I'm judging this based off of the movie. Why is he so feared in the galaxy? Why did he choose Gamora? And we saw the reason he chose Gamora, because she's a fighter. And like I say, there's nothing special about Gamora. Because Ebony Maw, Proxima Midnight, Corvus Glaive, the giant ugly dwarf black thingy from the Black Order, and Nebula are all the same. They're all fighters. So, why? Because pretty much he's been abusing Gamora her whole life. And he loves her. But when he kills her, watch. And another thing the Russo brothers did, oh. What what made him want to kill half his planet? Where did he get that killer instinct come from? Like I say, this is another problem with Infinity War. Before Titan was going to die, Thanos had an idea of let's kill half. Where did that come from? People just don't say stuff like, let's just kill somebody. You just don't say that. You just don't act on it. Killing, it's instinct, but killing wouldn't usually be a choice. Killing can come out on instinct when you get into your fight or flight mode. But like, Thanos had a had a, had an idea to kill half to save his planet because they knew the planet was dying. So before the planet was going to die, he had an idea, I need to kill half. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? What what was he like as a kid to to breed something that like that? Because people just don't say, let's kill half. You just don't. That's a hard decision to make. It's a hard decision. Why is Thanos able to make the hardest de- de- uh, decisions? What, cre- what, what made him into that in the MCU? Where did this come from? Where? Because this is all we know about Thanos in the MCU. We know people in the galaxy are afraid of him. We know he has an army of the Chitari and the uh, Chitari uh, and the other Ch- uh, and the um, Outriders. He he adopted the Black Order, Gamora and Nebula. Um, he also wants Infinity Stones to bring balance to the half the universe because his planet died, and that's all we know. That's literally all we know about Thanos, and he's supposed to be the epic villain of the Infinity Saga. You guys, Thanos is not Joker. Thanos has an origin in the comics. Give him an origin in the movies. Joker, he has no origin in the comics. No official origin. And he's been written like that ever since he came out. That's Joker. Joker doesn't need an origin. Joker is just there for one thing. To antagonize Batman. To be the opposite of what Batman stands for. To challenge Batman. That's it. That's it. Thanos has an origin in the comics. I expect an origin in the movies. It's that simple. He's not a mystery character. He's not. He's not. Give him one here. And yeah, I would say this is more of a little, uh, I guess, nitpicky. But why does Thanos have to close his fist and use the glove based off the MCU? In the comics, yeah, there's a reason. But in the MCU, what's the reason he has to close his glove? Because... The Rooster Brothers said they only made him close his fist just so there's a there's as a plot device. But they never said why why exactly you have to close your fist to use the stones. Like why? Why can't you have your hands open and then use the stones? Why? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's not a big deal, but I'm just saying. Like, it's a plot device, but why? Because it was an important plot device. And the Rooster Brothers gave a loose explanation. And if Endgame didn't even answer that, answer that because they had to close their fist too. But it's whatever. Okay. Now, let's go to the in a, 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 a epic scene of dialogue here. This is what I like about Thanos, you guys. Than- I like when Thanos visually talks. Even though I may not agree with what he, this he says, Thanos, when he visually talks, looks tight. He looks tight and he's physically strong, but that's all I like about Thanos. Other than that, his ideology is weak. I see no strong defense of it from him. I see no strong defense. Well, 
all six stones, I could simply snap my fingers. They would all cease to exist. I call that mercy. One thing I'll say, Thanos is the laziest villain in the MCU. That's very off-putting, too. This dude is so damn lazy. He literally wants to get six of Fane Stones and make his job easier. When other villains put in harder work in the MCU to get what they need to get. For example, Hela, Killmonger, Loki, but Thanos. Uh, okay. But, you know, like I say, it's whatever. Now, I'll tell you this much. Keep going. Another issue I have with Thanos in this universe. He's a... Uh, he's not a G like we say he's a G. And Thanos... The writers contradicted Thanos because Thanos contradicts himself. Watch this. This is from Avengers 2. This thing was visually dope, bro. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that, bro. This scene is dope. What did he just say there? I'll do it myself. Well, that is false because in Avengers Infinity War, this man got the whole Black Order and his whole army to do it. I'm going to do it myself. When you say you're going to do it yourself, you're going to do it yourself. You say, you're, I'm going to do it my, I'm gonna do it with my homies. Me and my homies going to take care of it, which is the Black Order, his army. <laughs> Come on, Thanos. I expect you to be a G, solo dolo. You know, like the Avengers, if the Infinity Gauntlet comic, he was mainly solo on that battlefield. There was literally more than 20 heroes in the Infinity Gauntlet comic going head up with Thanos. And, and the Infinity... This is why I say Avengers Infinity War and Endgame will never... It, Avengers, the Infinity Gauntlet comic is a 10 times better story and tells the story of Thanos coming to do the snap. It does it way better. And it shows it way better. It accurately shows the power better, bruh. When Thanos smacked Captain America in the face, Captain America instantly died. But in Avengers Infinity War, ugh, Thanos is pushing Iron Man, but Iron Man, but not. Thanos is pushing Cap, but Cap is somehow pushing Thanos back. Stupid. But in, also in Avengers in, Infinity War, Thanos had three stones. No, 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 no. No, he had three stones fighting Doctor Strange, Iron Man. Drax, Star Lord, Spider Man, and Mantis, and he got held down by these weakling mortals. Shouts out to the power scaling. It's even worse in Avengers Endgame. Shouts out to the power scaling. Another scene. What's next? Guardians 1 Thanos and Captain Marvel. Guardians 1 Thanos, Ronin, and Captain Marvel. Alright, you guys. We're about to get deep into some bit, a huge. Walking contradiction in the MCU. Watch this. The orb is in my possession. Ronan is Kree. Let's not forget that. Who is Captain Marvel associated with? The Kree. What did Captain Marvel say in Avenger in Captain Marvel? I'm gonna huh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna end your war. I'm gonna stop your war. I'm not gonna fight your war. I'm gonna I'm gonna come and stop you. Who stopped Ronan in Guard in, in Guardians of Galaxy 1? Was it Captain Marvel? No, it was the Guardians, who stopped Ronan the Accuser. Huh. Okay. 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 I'm trying to understand this. And Captain Marvel been in the same universe as, Cap as, as these two for 20 years. They all been in this universe for 20 years. Ronan and um, Thanos. The universe is about roughly 20 years in total. With all Across 22, all 22 movies. If you start at Captain Marvel and you include that. No, no, if you really start at Captain America, the first Avenger, and start that with the timeline, include that. Thanos and Ronan and them been here for a long time. Now, this is my issue with this. You're telling me Thanos and Ronan was working together, going from different planets, conquering and killing people, killing half the planets. And Captain Marvel's, who said, oh, there's more planets out there, Rhodey. I have to help them from Avengers Endgame. This is where it gets stupid. You're telling me Captain Marvel never came across one planet that Thanos attacked. And in Avengers Endgame, she wrote, she drove, she flew through 
Thanos' ship and broke it in seconds. And Thanos is still alive? Who? Who writes this stuff? Who writes this stuff? Who are these writers? Like I say, basic writing, easy scapegoats, weird plot devices. What the freak is going on? And people hype up Avengers Infinity War and Endgame like they freaking... Like, like that. Like I say, why do people like Avengers Infinity War? Be honest. Is it because it has action and uh, comedy? Let's be honest. Why do people like Avengers Infinity War? Because it ain't for the script. It definitely ain't for the script. It definitely isn't for the script. Because Civil War and Winter Soldier got a 10 times better script than both these movies. And the writing isn't basic like these two. Their storylines are grounded and a lot more basic than what this is. But they accomplish ten to- they accomplish stuff better. They keep it grounded. Russo Brothers, Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War, I would say is probably your worst films out of your out of Civil War and Winter Soldier. They did a they did an amazing job on Civil War and Winter Soldier. But these films and the writers they have for these, bro. Like I say, MCU, they 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 had ten years of no competition. They can get away with a bunch of stuff. They they can write whatever they want and get away with it, and fans will just eat it up. But let's watch this scene. As I promised. Listen to Thanos' dialogue. Guardians Thanos is the best Thanos, bro. Avengers Endgame and Infinity War Thanos, his his dialogue downgraded. Listen to how Thanos talks in these movies, bro. And this was a comedy, a trash comedy, but this Guardians was a comedy, bro. Listen, bro. Listen to how Thanos is a G up in this movie. Listen. Bring it to me. Yes. That was our agreement. Bring you the orb. Look at that. He looks more sinister. Look at the way they have him animated. His face looks sinister. He looks evil. In Infinity War Endgame, he looked like a happy... He looked like a build... He looked like a happy go build a bear raisin. And you will destroy Xandar for me. However, now that I know it can take... After Zen. I wonder where Captain Marvel was at when Xandar was being attacked. Ooh. Where was she at? I don't know. I don't know where she was at. Next scene. This is probably the best Thanos you can ever have. This seems like more of a comic Thanos right here. A G, bruh. Who says some real savage dialogue. You can't tell me an Avengers... Bruh, this one scene right here kills all of Thanos in Avengers Infinity War. It do. This is a savage right here. No holding back. He's a savage, bro. What he says is sinister, evil. Avengers Infinity War Thanos would look too nice. He seemed too nice. They humanized him too much in that movie. This Thanos looks like a G that you don't want to be friends with. Look at this. I think I can literally be friends with Avengers Infinity War Thanos. We can go get some ice cream and we'll be all good. Take this matter seriously. Watch. The only matter I do not take seriously, boy, is you. Look at, bruh, this is Thanos right here. What was that we got in up in, up in Endgame, bro, in Infinity War? Your politics bore me. Your demeanor is that of a pouty child. And apparently, you alienated my favorite daughter, Gamora. We shall honor our agreement, Kree, if you bring me the order. But return to me again empty-handed. And I will bathe the stallways in your blood. Bruh! Thanks, Dad. Sounds fair. Is this a PG-13 movie? This is one of the Bruh! Win. This can't be a PG-13 Let's movie. Let's head to the kill. Bruh, yes it is. This is Thanos right here, bro. What was that we got up in Endgame? In Infinity War, that weak, watered-down dialogue. I'm a bid, bro. He said, "I'm a bathe the stars with your blood." That is savage, bro. That is savage. There's a way you say things, bro. Thanos took a huge downgrade. Thanos took a huge downgrade. They 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 made him look. They made him look. 
more too human, bro. It's like he's an alien. Show me. I want to see an alien. Then had him take off his armor and stuff. I'm like, bro, you look whack. Put that armor back on. You look like a G. Let's go back here. Next scene. Well, next issues that I have is Thor contradicting the the Thor contradicting and the garbage character. What the A R A R C? No, dang, I really said that, but. Okay, what I was trying to say is Thor's garbage character development from Ragnarok to Infinity War that made that movie even worse for me to watch because Thor's character develop development made no sense. Because look at this scene here. This one scene in Ragnarok contradicts what happened with Thor's development from Ragnarok to um, Infinity War. It contradicts it. Look. You, the god of the dead, and the goddess of death. What? She's too strong. Without my hammer, I can't. Are you Thor, the god of hammers? Hmm? That hammer was to help you control your power, to focus it. It's now the source of strength. It's too late. The power is within you, son. That's what that means. Duh. It's already taken Asgard. Asgard is not a place. Never was. Oh, this could be Asgard. Asgard is where our people stand. Even now, right now, those people need your help. I'm not as strong as you. No. You're stronger. Oh, he is? Wow. I don't know. Because um, from what I saw in Avengers uh, Endgame, he had two hammers. He had one hammer that went through six Infinity Stones at once. And he had Mjolnir from the past. And he couldn't even kill Thanos on his own. What you mean? And like I say, big contradiction of Thor's character development. This doesn't make any sense. So you're telling me Thor from his dad told him, you're, you're more than a hammer. You don't need a hammer. What was Thor's goal in Avengers, in Avengers Infinity War? I'm going to go get a hammer. What kind of character development is that? What that means from from Thor Ragnarok, what it should have been. And this is why I hate Thor Ragnarok. Why did you take away his freaking hammer? You went back to Thor 1. <sighs> Infinity War. You're supposed to develop Thor. What Infinity War should have been was Thor developing his powers to be like Raiden. Because they teased it in Ragnarok, but then he goes back to a hammer again. That makes no sense. You take away his hammer. You tell him he doesn't need a hammer. Then he goes back to a hammer. This don't make no sense. Who writes this stuff? And people say Avengers Infinity War is better than Endgame. These movies are just... These movies have damn near the same problems. They're both just as mediocre. Winter Soldier and Civil War are ten times better than this. Let's see. And like I say, we'll just go skip to this point. Critics agree. Thor is a trash character. He's a failure. He allowed for the destruction of his planet to happen. He lost his girlfriend. And this is what uh, this is what else doesn't make sense about um in in, in uh in Endgame. So they tried to set up that Thor still feels something for Jane Foster. But in but in Infinity War, they shrugged it off like Thor and Jane just broke up and Thor got over it. And now they're trying to tell me in in, in, in uh, Infinity War, no, in Endgame, that Thor, wants to, that Thor is hella shy around Jane and stuff. Bruh, you broke up with her. Because in Ragnarok, you really didn't care. Now you care? Psh, trash. He's a, he's a, he's, he's an even bigger simp than Thanos in the comics. Trash, bro. Then watch this. Watch this. And this is my problem with this scene. Like I say, when I say this scene, then like I say, MCU and DCU have the same dumb problem. Remember in Batman vs. Superman, that trash movie, when Batman was fighting Superman, and we were looking like, wait a minute, 
Superman, why don't you just grab Batman and uh, break his armor and take him out of his suit and tell him, stop, listen to me, let's stop fighting. That stupid fight where Bat where Superman ran into into a kryptonite gr grenade and let himself get hit by a kryptonite. Stupid and retarded. This is the same equivalent of this scene. Watch this. Watch this. Just watch. And you'll, you'll get what I'm talking about. Just watch. Hammer went through a six and Vinny's stone blast. And look at this whole scene. Look at the time right here. This is my biggest issue with this scene. Hey, pull the hammer out. Boom. Put it in your hand. Cut off his arm. And then you can torture him if you want to. Just watch this whole scene. I told you. You'd die for that. Hey, Thor, while you got the, all this time, why don't you pull the glove off his hand, you dummy? And this is my problem with Thor again. They keep on treating him like he is a human, bruh. He is a godly being. Treat him like a godly being. They give him too much human traits, bro. They give him too much human traits. He's too human. He's doing basic human stuff. Contemplation. He's contemplating too much. Thor is 1,500 years old. He's used to war. Thor is used to loss. Thor is used to death. He's used to this stuff, bro. He gotta be. He been fighting wars for 1,500 years. And now he crumbles at Thanos? Thor been alive for 1,500 years on Asgard defending the Nine Realms with his dad. And now he crumbles with his, with his hammer. He crumbles now. He picks this time to crumble and start to fizz out. He picks his time to crumble. Infinity War. Shouts out to the writing and character development and not trying to make sense of Thor. Bruh. Bruh. Come on. This is this is a human mistake I would make right here. Because I'm human. I'm human. Thor isn't human like us. Sure, he can think. He can, you know, do that. he will have some human traits. But he's not completely human. He's supposed to be a godly being. Supposed to be. But he ain't acting like it. But it's whatever. Let's keep looking. Hey, you should pull off that glove. Did he just... Bruh. Batman versus Superman. You're gonna sit there and let him... Stupid, bruh. Like I say... Weak power scaling, weak writing, can't develop it prop can't develop it properly, bro. What the freak is going on? And people say Infinity War is better than Endgame. They they're both equally just as bad. They got the same problems. Inconsistent character development, inconsistent characters, they shit on characters, they don't give characters respect. For example, Thor. They keep on making him look trash. He keeps being too human. Whatever. Whatever. Tony Stark overshadows Captain America. Another issue I had, same as Endgame and same as Infinity War. Tony Stark overshadowing Captain America, the leader of the team. Team Captain America, freak Iron Man. Doctor Strange is going to Titan. Okay. This movie made me hate Endgame and Infinity War even worse. It made both these movies useless and stupid to me. Level with me, guys. Because this makes no sense. This makes no sense. Just level with me. Level with me on this. I get you like these movies, but level with your boy. Just listen. Hey, right, we haven't officially left. Cool. Saving you. But you have to understand. If it comes to saving you, or the kid, or the time stone, I will not hesitate to let either of you die. I can't. Because the universe depends on it. Yeah, this is when Doctor Strange became a punk when he said that because he went back on his word. Uh, trash. He didn't kill Thanos for two people that could have been easily revived. Whack. 
two people that could have easily been revived with the use of the Infinity Stones. But it's whatever. Um, this is my problem with this scene. Avengers Endgame just contradict this whole scene. And this is my problem with this movie. Infinity War. Characters made so much dumb decisions. The dumbest decisions I've ever seen. I watched a year. I watched 11 years worth of movies. And these characters are making the dumbest decisions I've seen a day in my life. This is what they should be doing. Link up with your soldiers. Your assets. Get your weapons together. Iron Man. You got the Iron Legion, right? He's still building suits. Bring all your suits into play. Hook up people with suits. Tell them we going to war. Daniel's going to come to West. We got all the stone. We got our stones. We finna body this dude. We're going to hide the stone somewhere in the mirror dimension. So he can't get to it. This is the problem with this. And you can't tell me. You can't tell me that this, this, this is false. Because Avengers Endgame disproved whatever you're trying to rebuttal against me. In Avengers Endgame. I saw Doctor Strange open up. Not one. Not two. Not three, but more than 10 portals bringing people from different planets and people from all different parts of Earth to Earth. Well, to the battlefield in Endgame where the Avengers HQ was. And and Strange made a portal from Titan to Earth, but he can't make a a portal from the space, the flying, the flying space donut back to, um, back to Earth. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Like I say, they try to go with something and then they contradict themselves later. Bad writing. If Infinity War was a comic book, <laughs> I couldn't read this. I'd rather read the Infinity Gauntlet comic, a better comic. Well, a better story based off of the story that Infinity War is copying off of. Infinity War is the Infinity Gauntlet comic, but backwards without Adam Warlock and Mistress Death. Guardians of the Galaxy, they had more they had more screen Guardians of the Galaxy, and this features Thor, but guard the Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor had more screen time than the main six Avengers, which is also another issue. With um which I which was another issue I had with the movie. That, you know, the main six Avengers had less screen time, while the Guardians and Thor got unnecessary screen time and they was cracking jokes for a majority of the movie. But I want to show you guys something. The terrible power scaling and prolonged fights that make no sense. These fights are the equivalent of Batman versus Superman. A fight that shouldn't be happening for as long as it did in that movie. That BVS fight with Batman and Superman was poorly choreographed and long. Now look at these fight scenes. We can all agree Wanda and Vision is stronger than Captain America, Black Widow, and um, Falcon. Watch this. All right, we know they all get beat up. We know what happens. Let's skip ahead. We know they get beat up. We know they get wasted. We know Wanda Vision and uh, Wanda Vision get beat up, and then we see Cap. Problem with this scene. Captain America, who's a human with the suit with, with performance enhancing drugs, came to save Vision and Wanda. What does Vision have in the middle of his head? A infinity stone. And you're telling me Wanda, who has her powers that are born from an infinity stone, can't fight Proxima Midnight and Corvus Glaive, who also do not pos- do who also just have weapons that can for some reason counter people with infinity stones, people who have their ability from infinity stones. Remember, Corvus Glaive in the MCU, he has just a spear. Proxima Midnight, she has a sword and she's an alien. You're telling me Black Widow, Scarlet Wit- Black Widow, Falcon, and Captain America defeated these two, but Scarlet Witch and Vision couldn't. You want to know what this is the equivalent of? And this makes it even worse. Goku and Vegeta get beat up by Frieza. Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien come to beat up Frieza. And they say Goku and Vegeta. That's the exact equivalent. That's the exact equivalent. And you want to know what someone would say to that who had some, at least some sense? This is stupid. <laughs> 
It makes no sense. Who writes this stuff? Like I say, Civil War, Warner Soldier did it better. The only problem with Civil War is that airport fight because they use Wanda and Vision poorly. Realistic, realistically, and based off the MCU, Wanda and Vision should have ended that fight in seconds. They were the strongest people there. And the last two standing should have been Wanda and Vision. Cat Vision could have easily soloed Captain America, could have easily took out um, Falcon, could have easily took out Bucky, he could have easily took out Ant-Man, and he could have easily took out... Uh, um, who, uh, who else was there? Yeah, that was it. But he could have easily took them all out, but he did. Oh, Hawkeye too. Let's continue. I'm going to show one more, and that's it. No, I'm going to show two more. This, this is where Infinity War throws me off. Let's go to the Hulk versus Thanos fight. This is one of my favorite action scenes in this movie, bro. This is one of the best action scenes in this movie, period. The best. As guardian, and for another, we have a hawk. We have a hawk. <laughs> now, nobody getting this comment session using the excuse, "Oh, Thanos has armor on. Thanos has armor on, so the Hulk can't make him bleed." It is the Incredible Hulk. You're telling me a little bit of armor is going to stop the Hulk. Okay, 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 okay. Well, I mean, he did get beat up by the Hulkbuster. He is already trashed. So it makes sense that he can't make Thanos bleed or have a bloody, you know, have some blood leaking out of his mouth after getting punched by Hulk. Look how many times Hulk punched him in the face and he's still not bleeding. Just watch. One, two, three, four, four, five, back now where was he at oh right here hope did his what five punches still couldn't make thanos bleed oh right here another issue i had with this movie the reasoning for why thanos was so underpowered this is the reason why thanos was underpowered and the dumb excuse people was just running with because they accept anything let him have his fun let him have his fun seriously i came to see thanos wreck people not play with people. This is not generic MCU movie. This is supposed to be big, grand MCU movie, not generic. Now look at this. You see, Thanos is not using the Infinity Stones. He must close his fist. There, there, they, the Power Stone was not glowing. This is all Thanos' raw strength on his own. Bro, this fight beast mode. And this is my problem with how trash the Incredible Hulk is in this in these films. He was gladiator for two years on another planet and he has not developed a new fighting style. That is trash. What kind of character development is that? You're a gladiator for two years, and you've been a gladiator for two years. You have no new fighting style, nothing. You still fight the same way you always fight. Trash. Now let's look at another scene. And this is my biggest issue with the scene, because I was like, are you serious? You're giving Iron Man too much. You're making him Batman. I'm, oh, I, I'm Iron Man. Watch this. They keep on trying to make Iron Man Batman, just giving them anything, bro. Here you go, Iron Man. You want to beat up Superman? You want to punch Superman in the face? Go ahead. You want to punch Galactus in the face? Go ahead. This is my problem with this scene. This fight scene looks good, but this is where you get messed up with the power scaling. 
He's about to punch him. Somebody said that he cut him, but he's clearly about to punch him. Watch this. And Thanos bleeds. But when Hulk does it, he doesn't bleed. So who's the strongest Avenger here? Like, Hulk's supposed to be cracking up more feats than uh, Iron Man when it comes to power. But Iron Man's over here surpassing Hulk when it comes to power scaling. Last thing, and then I'm done with my criticism of Infinity War and Endgame. Because both these movies have the same problem that people have with the movie, bro. Terrible, terrible uh, tone. Poor writing. Ter I wouldn't say terrible action, but terrible power scale. Now, you have to sit there in disbelief and just believe that You just got to sit here in disbelief and believe that all these people are strong enough to overpower somebody with three Infinity Stones. And what did Hulk, what did Bruce Banner say at the at the beginning of this movie? Thanos has the Space Stone and a Power Stone. He's already the strongest being in the universe. Okay. Doesn't look like the strongest being in the universe here. It looked like he was about to lose. There's so much problems with the choreograph of this fight scene, bro. This reminds me of BVS when Batman was, was fighting Superman. That trash choreography. Superman ran into a kryptonite grenade, and I was like, what the frick are you doing? That fight should have been over in seconds. But no, you gotta make a movie. You gotta make stupid stuff happen. So Thanos has three Infinity Zones, and he got stuck in his predicament. Okay. He's getting held down by a weak Spider-Man compared to Thanos. Doctor Strange should be the only one here strong enough to battle this dude. I'm just saying. You want to know the biggest issue with this scene? They have so many ways to take off that glove. For example, Iron Man did this in his movie. Iron Man, why don't you put your thrusters in front of your stomach, push yourself back, and you pull the glove back? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, bro. Put your thrusters in front, blast them forward, you'll blast you back, and you pull the glove, and no glove will come off. Let's go. Or hey, why don't you just cut off his arm? Everybody's standing there, cut off his arm. Let's go. Cool it right now. You understand? And then this happened. Now look at this. Look who's standing there the whole time and let this happen. I guess Nebula doesn't want Thanos to lose. I guess she wanted it to happen. But look at this dumb stuff, right? Good. Who writes this stuff and choreographs this? This looks so... F this Look, if you're going to write some superhero action scenes, bro, you can't do them like these and choreograph these so slow and make them look so sloppy. Yes, Endgame Infinity War looks visually tight. But there's a lot of visual flaws within it, bro. Because it's like, what the freak? Look. Nebula standing behind Star-Lord this whole time and allowed for Star-Lord to, to do that. She was standing there the whole time when she could have held him down. He came back with the soul stone. But she didn't believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stand there. Okay, Quill. We gotta cool it right now. You understand? Like I say, nobody, you guys need to listen to me when I say this. Dr. Strange could have easily cut off Thanos' arm. Because people will say this, oh, but K-Dot, you're not understanding. Go watch my endgame, my endgame one on this, and then come back to here. Because I say it in that video. Doctor Thanos is being held down like this, right? Cool. Dr. Strange... has a thing that we call the time stone. Now, this is why the 14 billion 600, uh, 14 million 605 possibility thing is stupid because 
there's more than one way. The Russo brothers allowed for this to be written in there just so they can make a sequel that's unnecessary to have. It's really because Endgame is all fan service, anyways. It's just fan service that makes no sense to a degree. Now we get to this movie, Infinity War, which is I would say almost even worse than Endgame. You're gonna sit here and tell me there's only one way to kill him. And what was Doctor Strange's plan in Endgame? Let Thanos. Let Thanos. No, 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 no. This was his plan. Let Captain, let Captain America, mess with time travel and go back in time, and stick his penis inside of Peggy Carter. This is the reason. Th- this is the reason Doctor Strange let Thanos kill half a billion of life. To do billions of people in the galaxy, and half the universe to do this. This is why he killed some. This is why Doctor Strange allowed this to happen, so Iron Man could die. He allowed it to happen so um, Captain America could also stick his penis inside of Peggy Carter. This uh, th- this is why I waited for it in Endgame. This is the big plan that Doctor Strange had: let Iron Man die and Captain America go time travel and stick his penis inside of Peggy Carter. Cause I'm looking, at, I'm looking at this, and this is this reminds me of BBS, the poorly choreographed fight scenes that make little no sense. They're just there for the sake of it, glorifying action that makes little to no sense. And if you're trying to build tension, show the tension right. This is the problem with this scene. You're gonna sit here and tell me, cause just listen, I'm about I'm about to debunk a bunch of stuff. If you cut off Thanos's arm, the glove that you cut off only fits on his left hand. If you cut off his hand, even if he takes the glove, he cannot put it on his right hand. It doesn't fit. Therefore, he would need to go back to the same planet to get an Uru metal glove made for his right hand in order for it to work. Therefore, Thanos loses in completely. Because if that's the case, when he goes back to the, the when Thanos goes back to the um goes back to the forge, Thor will already be there with Stormbreaker. Thanos will come to him and Thor will kill him. Like I say, you cut off Thanos' hand, he loses. He can't win. Tell me in the comment section down below how my way of doing it would be flawed. Tell me how, because the only reason I see an Endgame, there's no good reason why Doctor Strange did what he did. Because at the end of the day. Captain America went back in time. So basically, then Doctor Strange allowed for Thanos to kill half a billion of life in the galaxy. For Doctor Strange, no, no, for Captain America to go to go have a life with Peggy Carter, and for Iron Man to die, and for a fan service big battle to happen when that fight fight scene looked good, but it made no sense. Thor could have easily, with two hammers, killed Thanos, the twenty fourteen Thanos, who had no Infinity Stones. All it took was Thor by himself to kill. Like I say, Endgame, Infinity War, overhyped for no good reason. Avengers 1, Avengers, I was about to say Avengers Civil War, technically Avengers 2.5. Civil War and uh, Winter Soldier do it better. They're probably still top, these are top three MCU tier movies, bruh. Freak Guardians. Because in my top five is is uh in my top five is Avengers one, Iron Man one, Civil War, Winter Soldier, Black Panther. That's my top five. Top five best movies. <laughs> but that's what happens. I mean, this is the MCU that people come to love, and this is why I would say because Infinity War relied on Doctor Strange's ideology for me to give it a better grade than it already already was. And I was waiting until Endgame, because if Endgame justified why Doctor Strange did what he did for a good reason, I would have gave Endgame, I would have gave Infinity War probably a B and gave it a pass if Endgame was going to be tight. But Endgame was such a freaking bore that I'm like, what the freak, bro? I waited for, I. so what was Doctor Strange's plan? What was Doctor Strange's plan? Was it to let Tony Stark die and to let Captain America go sleep with Peggy Carter? If that's the case, that was a big waste of my time. He, Doctor Strange sat there and let half a billion of life, he ha, half of the universe die 
for for Tony Stark to die and Captain America to have a happy ending with Peggy Carter. Like I say, Doctor Shane could have easily sacrificed Spider Man and Tony Stark. This is whack, bro. This is whack. These two films are a waste of the Infinity Saga, bro. Like I say, when we hit Civil War, MCU movies took a huge downgrade, bro. After that, Thor Ragnarok came out, was a comedy. Black Panther came out, and the CGI downgraded like hell. The story was cool, but the CGI downgraded. Then you come out with Captain Marvel, which ended up being uh, as as bad as a uh, as bad as a Thor one and Incredible Hulk Phase one origin movie, and then you get to Inf Infinity War, which creates so many inconsistent character development and inconsistent characters, weird plot holes, lazy writing, weak power scaling, and these are these are superhero movies surrounded around power scaling, bro. Just like Dr Infinity War. And Endgame. You want to know what they remind me of? Dragon Ball Super. Civil War. Civil War, Avengers 1, and Winter Soldier is Dragon Ball Z. That grand spectacle. Dragon Ball Super is Endgame and Infinity War. Bad power scaling. Wacky, kooky comedy. In the wrong spots. And it's just glorified action. It's just hype. And that's it. No true meaning. Just wasted villains. And dude, that's it. Now I ask people. Why do you like Avengers Infinity War? Comment down below. Why do you like Avengers Infinity War? Is it because it has more action than Endgame? And that it has comedy? Why do you like Avengers Infinity War? What's the real hype behind? What's the real hype? What's the real hype? And don't get in this comment section down below. Talking using MC, using comics to explain these movies use the mcu like i use the mcu just now to back to back myself up i use the mcu i wasn't using the comics and like i say at the end of the day i love the infinity gauntlet comic i liked reading that story <laughs> but i'll tell you this much avengers infinity war and endgame coming to replicate that story they did it so terribly they did it they did it poorly bro they did it poorly and they didn't even give you a good surprise ending the ending was so... Everything about Avengers Endgame was so predictable because Iron Man putting his hand inside and putting his, using his armor as a gauntlet, bruh, I saw that as fan art months after Infinity War came out. Iron Man with the Infinity Stones, bruh, I saw that as fan art and it was real. I saw Captain America... I saw people teasing Captain America picking up Mjolnir way before Avengers Endgame came out. And, and fans were teasing it. And then it happened. Fan service stuff, bro. That movie... Look. Comment down below why you like these... Why you like Avengers 4 and Avengers Endgame. If you like these movies, there's nothing wrong with you liking them. I just want to know why. Because people are hype, over-hyping this stuff. And this stuff is doing some Batman versus Superman kind of stuff. Weak choreographed action. Same thing with Thor standing there right in front of Thanos, bro. Trash. Thor's trash. Hulk is trash. This movie keeps on shitting on these characters. They shitted on Thor. Thor had one epic moment. Bring me Thanos! Ah, and that was it. That was it. That's all Thor did. That was tight. Bring me Thanos! Yeah. Trash. This movie has the same problem as Avengers Endgame. They do characters dirty. They give the wrong character spotlight. They throw shade at their own characters. Thank you, Russo Brothers. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. Like I say, I'll always say the Russo Brothers' best films from the MCU is Civil War and Winter Soldier. Endgame and uh, Endgame and uh, Infinity War, um, they look visually nice and they have some good actors that made me like the movies, but that was it. Other than that, the script is terrible. Avengers Endgame, this this way I say look at Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War. Let's say Civil War and Winter Soldier would be the um the what the cliche people say, Tupac and Biggie of the rap game. Lyrical geniuses, whatnot. But I'm not saying I'm not saying they're the best. I'm just saying the cliche phrases. 
People say Tupac and Biggie, rap legends, yada, 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 the cliche. That is Civil War and uh, Winter Soldier. The mumble rap of the rap game, the cliche word people use, I don't call it mumble rap, I call it hype rap. Because I can understand what 90% of these people are saying. Well, 99% of what these people are saying. That is Avengers Endgame and Infinity War. That's basically what it is. That's basically what it is. That's what it. That's exactly what it is, bro. Like I say, Thanos was tight in Guardians of the Galaxy. He took a huge downgrade in dialogue. But hey, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Just so, just so you know, Avengers Endgame, I gave it a C- minus now. And Avengers Infinity War, D. That grade dropped. Because look, I like looking at these films. I do. But at the end of the day, I'm not finna sit here and uh, just hop on some hype train. Because when all the hype dies, at the end of the day... <laughs> and bruh, this ain't speaking from no biased standpoint. The Dark Knight is still better than Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame after watching both. Storytelling-wise, better. Action-wise, not better, but still. Overall, a better comic book film. Overall, a better comic book film. Because the, the story just propels it past it. And the score? Dark Knight, better score. Oh, the whole Nolan trilogy. The whole Nolan trilogy is better than Avengers Endgame and Infinity War. I think Avengers 1 is the only potential contender to go head up with the Dark Knight right now. I think that's the only potential contender. They still got films like Watchmen. Uh, and you got some, bruh. You can go back the past Marvel movies, bro. Look, Spider Man One, Spider Man Two, those are some dope contenders. I don't look, those are some dope contenders of movies, bro. Spider Man One, Spider Man Two with Tobey Maguire, bruh, come shot. Uh, Fantastic Four, nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> those X Men movies, nah, trash, nah, not contenders. There's some movies that are contenders, but these are not contenders, bro. They're not. They're not. Because Dark Knight has a so much better storytelling and dialogue that just propels it 10 times higher. But hey, it's whatever. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, go through that piece of positivity all the time. You guys know my grade. If you like these films, those are fine. But I just had to expose these films for what they are because they are not what people hype them up to be. Deuces. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to do it right. Deuces. Fuck, let me do it.